Welcome everyone. My name is Jay Merkel. I'm the executive director of the UAS Integration Office at the FAA. It is my distinct privilege and honor today to host the closeout celebration of the UAS Integration Pilot Program. My three years have just flown by. Our event today will have various speakers and videos followed by a 15 minute media question and answer session. All attendees are in listen only mode and the event is being recorded in live stream on the FAA's Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube channels. And with that, I'd like to introduce the Department of Transportation's Deputy Assistant Secretary for Transportation Policy, Mr. Finch Fulton. Finch, over to you. Thanks, Jay. Good morning, everybody. I've had the distinct pleasure of working closely with all of you over the past four years during the development and execution of this monumental pilot program. I remember four years ago during the transition when Dan Elwell and I were discussing recommendations for the secretary, for the FAA, and about what we were hearing from the impacted community. When we talked about how we thought this administration should approach the development of drone technology, focusing on partnership, collaboration, working side by side with innovators to get to yes on a shared approach to safety, she loved it. At the end of one meeting in January, she said, yes, this is the way to do it. Why can't we do it this way? Let's do it. Finch, I want you to set up a meeting our first week at the department with the FAA administrator, and we're gonna talk about this. So of course, afterwards I talked to Dan Elwell and said, Dan, I don't have a job in the administration. Did we just get hired? What just happened here? Uh, so fortunately that was the case uh, and that started my time in government. Uh, and it's been such a privilege to work under the leadership of Secretary Chow, Deputy Administrator Dan Elwell, Administrator Dixon, our Chief Technology Officer, Michael Kratzios, and also both Earl Lawrence and Jay Merkel. And I can't say enough about the leadership of the IPP, IPP partners themselves working with us to help us get better at this. The contributions made throughout the country from our partners have changed the way the US approaches aviation in these technologies and brought us back to being the world leader of the safe integration of the airspace. But this is just a touch point today. We're graduating beyond the drone integration pilot program. We're taking what has worked in the IPP and focusing on the next big thing beyond visual line of sight. As part of this, we will continue to work with you on ensuring routine and consistent approvals of the technologies and processes we've used to get here. We remain committed to the successful approaches of the IPP today into the second term and beyond. And with that, I'm delighted to introduce the U.S. Secretary of Transportation, Elaine L. Chow, the first American woman to be appointed to a president's cabinet in American history. This is in fact her second cabinet position, having previously served as the U.S. Secretary of Labor. Secretary Chow has a distinguished career in the private, public, and nonprofit sectors. Under Secretary Chow's leadership, a key U.S. Department of Transportation priority is engaging with new technologies to address legitimate, le legitimate public concerns about safety, security, and privacy without hampering innovation. She has been actively engaged in encouraging and challenging the transportation sector to address the issues of societal importance to our country. Secretary Chow's visionary leadership is preparing our country for the transportation systems of the future. Transporta uh, Secretary Chow received her MBA from the Harvard Business School and is the recipient of 37 honorary doctorate degrees. Please join me in welcoming Secretary Elaine L. Chow. This month, we're wrapping up the UAS Integration Pilot Program, or the IPP. In November of 2017, the department solicited applications from state, local, and tribal governments to participate in a three-year program to build experience with advanced drone operations. We received 149 applications. We ended up working with nine geographically diverse lead participants. Over the last three years, they conducted a variety of advanced drone operations under widely differing conditions. And the results are impressive. The first Part 135 air carrier certificates for drone package delivery were issued to wing and UPS flight forward. The Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma improved pecan crop harvests using drones because drones found that many trees 
suspected of suffering from disease actually had healthy growth in their upper branches. This knowledge led to a 200% higher yield from these trees. And four participants used their IPP experience to provide COVID-19 support. These are UPS, Flight Forward, Flight Trex, and Zipline in North Carolina and Wing in Virginia. Another Virginia IPP participant, State Farm, operated over people and beyond visual line of sight to safely conduct roof and infrastructure damage assessments following hurricanes Florence and Michael. And it was subsequently granted a nationwide waiver that also allows pre-damage assessments. Drones reduce the average response time of the Chula Vista Police Department in California to 911 priority calls from six minutes to about two minutes. It also used drones with loudspeakers to provide health information to isolated homeless communities. The data and experience collected by the UAS Integration Pilot Program will guide ongoing drone rulemaking, policy making, and guidance. And it will also help in addressing remaining challenges such as flights over the heads of people and those that are beyond the line of sight of the operator. Now, while the end of this program closes one chapter in building partnerships, the relationships we have built with state, local, and tribal governments and industry partners will endure in a new program we're calling BEYOND. BEYOND is all about what's next. What's next in drone technology? Or what's next in drone innovation? What's next in terms of partnerships? In BEYOND, we will continue the partnerships established under the IPP and make new ones. This way, we can tackle the technological, policy, and social challenges necessary to conduct routine UAS flights, especially that operate beyond the operator's line of sight. So congratulations to everyone involved in the UAS Integration Pilot Program. The benefits and innovation that have come from this three-year program have certainly been beyond all expectations. Thank you. A big thank you to Secretary Elaine L. Chow and the entire Office of the Secretary. They have provided incredible leadership and support from the department during the duration of this program. And now, please welcome from the Office of Science and Technology Policy, the United States Chief Technology Officer, Mr. Michael Kratzios. Michael, over to you. Good afternoon. It's uh, fantastic to be here with you today. Uh, on behalf of the White House, I want to thank Secretary Chow and Administrator Dixon for their leadership with the IPP. And now the BEYOND program to advance the safe and innovative integration of drones into the national airspace. The Trump administration identified this as a top priority early in 2017. And by working together with industry, academia, and state and local partners, we are making it a reality. When President Trump signed a memorandum in 2017 launching the IPP, he laid out a vision of the future of American leadership in transportation. Since then, the entire administration has worked to develop a strong domestic drone manufacturing base and a forward-leaning regulatory framework that allows innovation to grow here in America. We believed then, just as we do today, the drone technologies have enormous potential to bring economic and societal benefits to the American people. 
However, in 2017, commercial drones were barely getting off the ground. We saw an opportunity to address this through the IPP, and since then, our nation has come quite a long way. The IPP has been integral to propelling the American drone industry forward like never before. Secretary Chow mentioned some incredible examples of the tangible benefits we saw through IPP operations, from agriculture to public safety to medical deliveries and so much more. These operations were not possible only a few short years ago. I'd also note the progress that's being made on rules for remote ID and operations over people thanks to the data and lessons learned from the IPP program. As the Secretary just announced, the new Beyond program will build upon this foundation and then some, with a specific focus on Beyond visual line of sight integration. Progress here will open a world of innovative opportunities for infrastructure inspection, public safety operations, and small package delivery. We're thrilled the Beyond program will continue and expand the important work and partnerships that already began under the IPP. I again want to thank DOT and the FAA for their leadership and commitment to advancing American leadership in UAS. We're excited for continued progress in the months ahead and for the launch of the Beyond program. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Michael. You've played an integral leadership role in the IPP from the very beginning. And we're glad that you're here to shepherd us into the next exciting phase of this effort. Now, I'm very pleased to introduce our FAA Administrator, Mr. Steve Dixon, and FAA Deputy Administrator, Mr. Dan Elwell. Steve, Dan, over to you. Thanks, Jay, and uh, thank you to Secretary Chow for those uh, encouraging words, and also to Finch and Michael for uh, setting the stage uh, for us. This is uh, one of the most exciting times in aviation, and a lot of it is due to what's uh, been going on with the IPP program. Um, you know, looking back on the long line of IPP successes, we're gonna be doing that uh, today, but we're also thinking about the future and launching uh, with the new BEYOND program. And as the secretary said, BEYOND will pick up where IPP left off. It's the next step toward full integration of UAS uh, in the system. And I emphasize integration. That really has been our strategy here uh, for the last uh, several years. And it's clearly also about moving beyond the visual line of sight. In fact, uh, in true FAA fashion, we came up uh, with a great acronym for it, uh, BEYOND. There's no shortage of, of acronyms and abbreviations in, uh, in aviation and beyond actually stands for BV loss, expanding your operations, needing drones. And it's really got three meanings behind it. Uh, the first one is, is that it's beyond the IPP. It's the next step uh, in, in this, uh, in this uh, integration process. It's also uh, got as a primary focus uh, developing uh, beyond visual line of sight uh, capabilities and beginning the process of scaling them across the national uh, airspace system. And also using our crawl, uh, walk, run approach uh, to drones, it's moving beyond the crawling phase into the first uh, steps of the, uh, of the walking phase for drone integration. So really an exciting uh, announcement that we're making today. Now, just like the IPP, uh, Beyond puts safety first. It continues the amazing partnerships that we developed under the IPP and certainly leverages those lessons learned. It also harnesses the innovative power of those partnerships. We build on those strong relationships that we have already developed and uh, we've entered new agreements uh, with them to continue the collaboration to solve the remaining challenges that we're working together on. Beyond really enables the greatest benefits possible to the public, particularly as it relates to uh, Beyond Visual Line of Sight or BV loss operations. And it allows us to better understand the societal and economic benefits and best practices for engaging our communities around the country. But uh, before we go any further, uh, I wanna ask uh, Dan really to, to uh, review in a little more detail 
uh, some of the accomplishments uh, during the IPP program mm -hmm. uh, that we're celebrating today. Hey, thanks, Steve, um, and welcome, everybody. Uh, glad to be here. Uh, great to see Finch do an intro. Um, and, and he's, uh, I, I remember well those conversations back in 2017, Finch. Um, and uh, Michael Kratzios, uh, I, I, we, we, go, we go back a little ways uh, with uh, CES and a couple of other interesting uh, events that we've been able to uh, witness over the years with regard to drones. One of the great things about this administration is its um, uh, addiction to innovation. And it's why, it's why we love aviation. It's why we're here of the administration to see these things flourish. Um, and, and of course, we couldn't have gotten this far without the IPP uh, and the many lessons learned. Uh, and I really wanna give uh, echo the thanks already given to the rulemaking communities uh, for all their hard work over the past three years. This just did not happen overnight. Um, communities, uh, stakeholders all had to come together for the IPP to take root. Um, and here's cases where drones really help people. You know, S Steve, you just participated in a U.S. event on Wednesday with North Dakota. Uh, North Dakota Senator John Hoven, who has been a huge champion, as we all know, um, for the IPP, but it, for drones in general. Um, and that meeting um, highlighted drone operations, not just simulations, but truly uh, operations that help people. In April, as part of the IPP, the North Dakota Department of Transportation conducted BV loss and other advanced operations to keep watch on the Red River as it overflowed. As you know, the Red River rises and falls seasonally and it, and it has to be monitored along the banks uh, in Grand Forks, something it, it, it does uh, every, every spring. So uh, drones watched the water level so people weren't tempted uh, to go look for themselves. Uh, and in the past, they may have been tempted to climb the dikes uh, to get a look at the water uh, state and how high the uh, river was rising. And it's a risky proposition. Um, so North Dakota DOT puts on social media so the public can see the conditions from the comfort and safety of their homes. Um, it's a 750,000 page views during floods in April. 750,000 people took a look at that. So uh, obviously a very, very helpful service there. Um, and there's ancillary benefits. North Dakota DOT staffers uh, previously got inundated with phone calls. Now the public can see it right there at the, in their own computers. Um, there's no shortage of good news stories from IPP ops, uh, particularly in the part 135 area. Um, that's uh, one of the more enduring legacies of the IPP said it led to the first part 135 drone delivery services. And we have a short video that shows some of the action. Um, this is Wing Aviation's uh, uh, demonstration and they were the first to receive an FAA part 135 air carrier certificate for drone package delivery. And you can see the methods that Wing is using to deliver goods. UPS flight forward was the second operator to receive a part 135 certificate. And I think you can see here, the slightly different method, but the same result. And you know, when COVID-19 hit, both drone delivery carriers joined the fight. Wing aviation delivering medicine, personal protective equipment or PPE, and even school books. UPS flight forward transporting medical supplies, PPE and prescriptions. Other IPP participants playing major roles as well as flight tricks, zip line and state farm are all part of it. You know, the upshot of all this is that public benefits plus data and experience help with ongoing rulemaking, policy and guidance. We have a better understanding of the risks and how to address those risks. And so, these activities have supported two major rulemakings as already uh, mentioned that will be finalized soon. Remote identification or as we call it, RID and operations over people or OOD provide regulatory certainty to enable scalable drone integration and operations. And the RID and OOD final rules could not be timed better 
in terms of the basic regulatory infrastructure that we're going to need for beyond. Um, we need RID to ensure the safety of routine beyond visual line of sight operations and package delivery and operations in shared airspace, including congested low altitude airspace as part of the UTM, unmanned traffic management. And we also need our ID for security, connecting a drone to its operator, providing threat discrimination for law enforcement, you know, putting LEO, law enforcement officers, national security partners in a better position to, to locate the operator, determine if a drone is being operated in a clueless, careless, or criminal manner, take appropriate action if necessary. You know, with remote ID and ops over people, the FAA can succeed in its mission to ensure safety in the beyond program. And more broadly, in many exciting new forms of transportation, including advanced air mobility, flying taxis, for instance, you know, it has to be safe or the public's simply not going to accept it. It's part of the commercial proposition, if you will. So it's up to you, the industry and drone operators to make sure your operation is synonymous with safety. Steve? Thanks, Dan. I think you said it very well. I couldn't agree more. You know, safety is the only way to fully exploit the energy, creativity, and innovation of this industry. And working together in the Beyond program is going to be uh, key to creating those new partnerships and leveraging what we've learned uh, from the IPP. And if if IPP is any indication, uh, Beyond will be truly exciting, I think transformational and tremendously beneficial to uh, the aviation system and to our country. So expect good things to come. And at the risk of uh, what my children would say is a dad joke, uh, welcome to the great beyond. So uh, back to you, Jay. <laughs> That's a good dad joke, Steve. Thank you to Steve and Dan for, uh, we really can't thank you enough for all your leadership throughout this program. Uh, the FAA is a very large and complex uh, organization. Everything from the aviation safety oversight to running the largest air traffic control system in the world. And all the airports and staff offices, uh, it's large and complex and you've always been there for us. And we truly, truly appreciate all of your support. And boy, you've helped us keep it moving forward. And wow, did things ever move. I can't say any better than it's already been said. You know, but being in the middle of the program day in and day out, watching the emails go by, dealing with the highs and lows, the triumphs, the frustrations, Sometimes it's a little hard to see all the progress and to truly appreciate all the progress that we've made. And it's been great to hear everyone's summary of it so far. But I think it's important to take, for us to take a step back and really look and take stock and how far we've come.
at this point, the aircraft's going to go to its predetermined. Range. calling us or trying to report crimes and they might call the wrong agency. That's the old uh, Toys R Us. So if you've seen a Hispanic male adult, 35 years, I think we can look in the area where the subject was last seen and see if we can. Having that, that aerial position gave us just uh Wow. Incredible. Now these moments of celebration and back patting are important, but not for long. Administrator Dixon is always pushing us to strive for continuous improvement in the FAA. Um, yesterday's or today's celebration is just more opportunity to try and find better things to do for tomorrow. And that's really what Beyond is all about. As you've heard both from Secretary Chow and from Mr. Kratzios, We've learned a tremendous amount from the IPP, but one of the biggest things we learned is we're not done with the work. We need to do more. And the FAA is fully cognizant that we're, that unlocking truly scalable and economically viable uh, beyond visual line of sight is both the big next step and the biggest challenge that faces us all, but also the biggest reward in drone integration. Along with that, we need to gain a fuller understanding of societal concerns and how best to integrate these innovative operations into our communities. And there's something we, that's something we definitely started in the IPP, but we need to continue that work. And we're thrilled to have eight lead participants from the original IPP participating with us in the BEYOND program. But before I get ahead of too many things, I would be remiss not to recognize our state, local, and tribal partners in the IPP. Without them, no airplane would have flown. Without them, no progress would have been made. Uh, we on the FAA side were facilitators and, and help, but the real work, the real innovation came from the lead participants and their partners. Um, the nine lean participants and their industry team members have worked incredibly hard over the last three years and made progress that I don't think aviation is accustomed to seeing that this much progress made this quickly by so many people on so many different fronts. It's truly been phenomenal to be a part of this. And from their initial applications and all of their regular reports to the actual operations testing and flying, it's been a big effort. And so we're pleased that they could all join us today and highlight their own accomplishments. And to kick it off, I'd like to introduce Mr. James Grimsley of the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. James? Thank you, Jay. Uh, the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma was the only tribal government that was selected uh, to be part of the IPP. And to our knowledge, the first tribal government nation to be part of an advanced technology uh, program like this. Uh, we were also recognized as the uh, a public aircraft operator by the FAA, which is a huge historical event for tribal governments and for the Choctaw Nation. So we're excited about what the future holds for those things. We're very excited about Beyond because we've already seen the benefits that this technology and related emerging technology can have for rural communities and improving our quality of life, improving public uh, health and safety. And we're seeing those things play out. This is having a, a, a dramatic impact on our economic development opportunities in, in Southeastern Oklahoma within the Choctaw Nation and in, in our region. So we're very excited and we appreciate the, uh, the uh, cooperation and, and collaboration with FAA and DOT as part of this program. We're excited about the future. Thank you. Thank you, James. Incredible work. And now the first of our two municipalities Caitlin McCauley from the city of San Diego. Good morning, all. I very much appreciate you having me here today. Thank you, Jay, for that warm welcome. I apologize I can't be on via video today. I have um, an opposing 
uh, obligation this morning, but I did want to highlight a few of our operations. Of course, under public safety, we were fortunate enough to receive the first tactical BV loss in the nation. We are also uh, currently pending a two to one operation and 100% coverage for that jurisdiction. So we were able to meet 100% of the goals we set forth when we entered this program for public safety. We also were able to receive an operations over people from medical specimen delivery. And we were able to also participate with some other federal um, agencies to do some food delivery that enabled us to test remote identification purposes. Thank you so much, guys, for this opportunity. We will not be continuing on and beyond, but we're looking forward to seeing what goes on uh, in that program and for the industry. Have a wonderful day. Thanks. Thank you, Caitlin. Caitlin, you and San Diego have been an absolute pleasure to work with throughout the IPP. And I know, Caitlin, you're going on to some exciting opportunities to change the world in different ways. And we wish you the very best in all your endeavors. So now, closer to home, Mr. Mark Banks from the Virginia Center of Innovative Technology. Mark. Thanks, Jay. And on behalf of the Virginia Center for Innovative Technology, Virginia Tech, and the entire Virginia team, I do want to thank the Department of Transportation and the FA for their collaboration and support throughout the IPP. We started the IPP with a team of incredible partners that we knew could combine rapid innovation with a meaningful discussion needed to tackle key issues. It's been remarkable to see the results, including the first commercial drone delivery service directly to residences right here in Christiansburg, groundbreaking national, nationwide approvals to assess storm damage, and extensive testing that lays the foundation for true long distance operations. I like to say that drones are growing up, and I think that's never been more true than it is today. The IPP enabled research and trials that changed the landscape of what is possible, and it has demonstrated firsthand the power of collaboration between the industry, regulators, and communities, and the value of engaging the public. Now it's time to move beyond those initial steps towards routine, scalable BV loss operations. And we all know the next steps are challenging ones, but the Beyond program is designed specifically to address those challenges, taking the lessons learned from the IPP into the next phase of drone integration. As we're pleased to embark on this new program, and continue our productive relationship with our partners, the FAA, and the public. And we're really excited to see what's ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. It's always exciting to know what th what fantastic things are going on a little bit down route, or excuse me, Interstate 81 from us. So close to home. Next, please welcome Mr. Bob Brock from the Kansas Department of Transportation. Thank you, Jay. It is uh, great to join you from the air capital of the world. We have had uh, so much fun in this uh, project between Jay and Earl providing leadership to, uh, I wanna make special thanks and appreciation for uh, Michael and Finch for kicking off this uh, activity from, uh, from the White House and from USDOT. Um, that imagination and uh, willingness to reach out and make things happen has, uh, has made an enormous difference. Administrator Dixon, you are absolutely uh, one of our people here in Kansas, and as we have relationships with FAA already at length, um, I wish that all of you on this call could have been with me yesterday as we had industry, we had over 200 industry partners out in the field with drones, with the community, demonstrating value and demonstrating how we're going to lead the globe in fielding UAS capabilities in a meaningful way. So uh, we're excited about Beyond, Jay and Earl, as you have led these uh, projects for the FAA. Um, that's heroic work as you've uh, crossed those bridges for us. And uh, so we do want to thank you and look forward to, uh, we will make BB Law work for the United States in all of these LPs. But uh, we're, we're behind you and the general aviation industry is as well. So thanks so much, Jay. Thank you, Bob. Kansas is clearly well positioned to continue leadership in the aviation industry. And I'm glad we have you out there. Now, we have Terry Blue from the Memphis Shelby County Airport Authority. Over to you, Terry. Thank you, Jay. The Memphis Shelby County Airport Authority has been honored to play the role as the only airport lead participant in the UAS IPP. Over the last two years, our team has worked with the FAA to develop policies and procedures to support our focus areas of aircraft inspections, security surveillance, foreign object debris detection, and payload delivery in Class B airspace at North America's busiest cargo airport. 
we've made significant progress in taking these first steps to safely integrate advanced drone operations in the airport environment. I'd like Oops, sounds like we lost Terry, but thank you. That's great work that they're doing down there. Um, I hope everyone has the opportunity to see some of the things they're doing uh, on the airport and around the airport. Truly, truly innovative work. And it hits close to home for a lot of us in the FAA. So we're excited to have you in the pipeline. Next is Mr. David Howard from the North Carolina Department of Transportation. David? I think I am off mute, but I cannot take myself off, cam turn the camera on. Uh, you That's, are off mute. There I am. Um, thank you so much, Jay. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you for having me. Um, the Wright brothers completed their first powered flight um, over 116 years ago here in North Carolina, and we're excited to continue to foster innovation in aviation. North Carolina's participation in IPP has been wonderful, not only for the advancement of drone technology, but also importantly for the benefit of the people of our state. We've used drones after natural disasters like Hurricane Florence to monitor infrastructure, to inform decision makers about real-time conditions, and to show the public the extent of the damage and the dangers. Last year, we established the first routine commercial medical drone delivery service at Wake Med Hospital in Raleigh and have since grown to a total of five uh, routine package delivery operations. Understanding the role of state, local, and tribal government was a focus of this program. Uh, we created a state level unmanned traffic management system to help safely enable drone operations in our communities. We look forward to continuing that conversation. In North Carolina, uh, first in flight isn't something that we were, is something that we are. And we're so proud of everything NCDOT, our partners and other participants have achieved. So I wanna thank our team here at NCDOT for your hard work, our IPPP, our IPP partners for their work, expertise, and of course, all of the USDOT FAA um, teams for selecting us to be part of this groundbreaking ex experience and help us, helping us out so much every step of the way. Uh, we see IPP as a first step to many great things to come, and we're excited about the chance to continue to work with FAA, our partners, into the future. So thank you, Jay. Thank you, David. Uh, the Tar Heel State has had a long and um, important part in aviation history here in the United States. And it's just fantastic to see you continuing that tradition down there with drones and look forward to seeing what you do next. We always know it will be innovative and important. And now over to our other North state, Nick Flom from the North Dakota Department of Transportation. Uh, if you have the opportunity to work with Nick, I suggest you take it. He is one of the most passionate people about this area I've ever met. And he has been exactly the person we needed when we needed him to help sometimes get us out of a bit of a rut and see the larger picture. So back over to you, Nick. Thanks, Jay. It's my great honor today to represent the North Dakota IPP team on behalf of our lead participant, the North Dakota Department of Transportation. When we submitted our application to participate in this novel program, we wanted to make sure that we not only advanced our UAS partners in North Dakota, but also can make an impact on the rest of the UAS industry. We feel we were successful with that through laying the groundwork for applicants to get waivers to operate over people. When we started working this problem with the FAA at the start of the IPP, there had not been a parachute approved as a mitigation for operations over people. Since then, over 100 waivers have been issued with parachutes and enabling operations over people. We plan to do the same thing with Beyond Visual Line of Sight through the Beyond program. North Dakota introduced Vantis, our statewide Beyond Visual Line of Sight network that will be enabled in partnership with the FAA through Beyond. We applaud the FAA for structuring Beyond to build on the successes of the IPP and thank them for allowing us to help move the UAS industry beyond together. Thanks, Jay. Thank you, Nick. You truly are changing the aviation landscape there. And now our second municipality, Ms. Rebecca Venus from the city of Reno. Rebecca? 
Good morning, Jay. Can you hear me okay? Loud and clear, Rebecca. Um, thank you. Uh, in the great state of Nevada, today we are celebrating Nevada Day. It's the day that commemorates our state's history to the admission in the Union. It's appropriate this event is being held today as the Battleborn State has a rich history in UAS testing programs. In 2012, we were identified as only one of six states that the FAA would use as a UAS test site. In the city of Reno, we have been focused on testing the use of drones to save lives and improve public safety response. During the program, we had two operations where we partnered with local UAS technology companies. The first operation was a partnership with Flirty Inc where we tested the use of drones to deliver automated external defibrillators to cardiac patients during emergency incidents. The second was a partnership with Iris Automation. We tested the use of drones during critical river rescue operations being conducted by the Reno Fire Department's water entry team. I would like to recognize and thank your team, Jay, and everyone at the FAA for the work that you have done over the past three years to make this program successful. And on behalf of the biggest little city, the Reno Fire Department, our partners, Iris Automation and Flirty, and the rest of the team, I'd like to thank the FAA for allowing us to be a small part in this landmark program. And thank you again to everybody and wishing you a happy Nevada Day. Well, thank you. Happy Nevada Day back to you, Rebecca. Reno is such a unique community environment and we're excited to see how you contribute to the societal engagement conversation and moving that forward. And now finally, from the nation's largest state and also the state that depends on aviation more than any other state in the union, I'm very pleased to welcome Kathy Cahill from the University of Alaska, Fairbanks. Well, Jay, thank you. It's a real honor to be here. On behalf of the entire Alaska team with partners too numerous to mention, uh, IPP has been a wonderful thing for us and we are very excited about moving be into beyond with you. The partnership we had with the FAA for IPP led us to being able to do the first no human eyes on the aircraft uh, beyond visual line of sight operation under the part 107 rules in domestic airspace. This was a flight over the Trans-Alaska pipeline using purely detect and avoid technology to ensure airspace safety. We are very, very excited about that and are looking to build on that success into beyond. We have a great team and we know that our partnership with the FAA is going to allow us to make great strides on missions of import to Alaska and also to other people in the country. On this particular case, we're gonna be moving forward with cargo delivery to remote communities, something that has a chance to really improve quality of life for people and ensure safety. We're looking at medical supply deliveries picture a serum run between Gnome and, uh, and Nanana, and you're looking at the original Iditarod. And also we're really looking at being able to do long distance linear infrastructure monitoring for pipelines. It, right now it's being done with manned aircraft and by transitioning over, we really believe we can help increase the security and safety in the national airspace system. So we're very excited about this potential and what this uh, means for the great state of Alaska. We're looking forward to this partnership and thank you guys for allowing us to continue into beyond. Thank you, Kathy. And thank you again to all our lead participants and their industry partners for continuing with us throughout the duration of the IPP. Uh, what you're doing for your communities is truly awe-inspiring. I know it hasn't always been easy. There've been lots of late night phone calls and early morning emails and times when we all looked at each other and said, hmm, how are we going to get this done? But there have been a few bumps, but, we still, but we've gotten through all of them, and we still have much to do. But please know how deeply we appreciate the time and energy you've put in so far. And now I'd like to transition us to the media question and answer portion of our program. I'd like to remind people that you can type in your questions to the Q&A function here in Zoom. I will read each question aloud and hopefully I get to find a panelist to answer it for me. Otherwise, I will answer the question on your behalf. So let's get started. And James, the first question is for you. I'm lucky I get to send one. Wondering what role the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma might play going forward with Beyond. 
Well, we uh, we will be like our other uh, colleagues and, and counterparts and beyond. We'll be doing things like working toward package delivery, small package delivery, uh, beyond uh, visual on site, linear infrastructure inspection, public safety operations. So we're going to see a lot of similarity of missions, I think, in this program where we had a, probably a bigger diversity. We're going to start to narrow down to those things that we think have a return on investment and have a bigger impact on our community. So we will be working toward regular operations, which is very necessary uh, to, to really continue to move the rulemaking forward. We need regular operations to assess everything from the societal impact response, but we need that data and information to work with the FAA on rulemaking. So a lot of the rulemaking depends on the availability of data. So we're excited to move toward regular operations. That's the next step. It'll be in select areas where we work. We make sure we have the safety case, make sure we're doing it in all the right ways. But we want to start moving toward regular operations because that's what's really needed for this industry to continue to move forward. Thank you. Thank you, James. Uh, the second question, well, I think I'll start. Will there be any membership changes in the BEYOND program from the IPP in both the lead participants or the industry partners? So let's start with the lead participants. Uh, eight of the nine lead participants are continuing with us so far. Uh, at, at this time, the city of San Diego due to financial constraints cannot continue, but we hope to find a way to re-engage them. They've been a very valuable partner and we're still working that. In terms of the industry partners, that's actually up to the lead participants. Uh, the FAA does not uh, regulate or negotiate with that. Uh, our relationship is with the lead participants. So I think that's one of the advantages in terms of innovation is the, the lead participants can choose to create new relationships and uh, find new innovators and engage in new ways that are that are meaningful to their communities and further these objectives. So yes, I expect there will be changes. As of now, I don't know of any major ones, but uh, watch the announcements that come out of our lead participants for any changes to their industrial or industry partners. Um, and then we have a question, what was the most impressive accomplishment out of the program? Hmm. Well, to all, uh, all the representatives of the lead participants, I'm not gonna turn this into which is our favorite child. I want you to know. I think the, the most important accomplishment is collectively what we all learned about the safe integration of drones into the airspace and what we learned we didn't know and we need to figure out. So that's on the operational and technical side. And then very, very important uh, we learned a tremendous amount about how to engage local communities, what their concerns are, um, how to address those concerns. As I said earlier, I don't think that work is done and we can we will continue it. But um, if a community doesn't feel comfortable with these operations, they, they would never happen and, and the ability to achieve the societal benefits would never occur. So I think that has been very important as well. So let's see if we have any more questions. What benefits did citizens in the IPP location see throughout the drone program? Um, oh gosh, I think every LP has done that. We've heard from, we've heard about what happened in, or the, the operations in North Dakota, in North Carolina, um, in Virginia and the public safety uses in Reno and in um, San Diego. Uh, again, um, I, I think I'd like to get a little more perspective from, well, Choctaw Nation, sorry, uh, and Kansas, but I'd like to get a little more from Kathy in the Alaska perspective, because aviation is so important. It's the lifeblood of transportation up there. Maybe you can give us a little more on the benefits to citizens up there, Kathy. I would be happy to. So for the state of Alaska, only 20% of our land is accessible by road. So for us to get uh, cargo into communities right now, it's predominantly air cargo. And this year we had a case where our major air cargo carrier went bankrupt and these communities were not able to be served. And we're not talking, you know, delivering uh, things that are kind of a nice to have. We're talking about delivering things that are a need to have. 
Diapers and milk to the villages is not sexy, but it is something that is actually very important for the quality of life in these communities. And COVID-19 this year highlighted some other weaknesses we had. Uh, if you happen to have a remote community, they don't have the healthcare infrastructure to deal with a COVID-19 outbreak. So the Alaska state mandates prohibited communication, um, transportation into those communities unless it was essential. So if you can do an unmanned aircraft uh, cargo mission, not only can you get the goods in there, you can keep a potentially infected pilot from entering that community and transmitting the disease. So for us, this is a function of we don't have a last mile problem, we have a last hundreds of miles problem. How do we get these goods to people to improve their quality of life, ensure aviation safety in the process, and really uh, make sure that the people in the communities are served? Thank you, Kathy. Uh, from, here's the next question. Will the applicants for part 135 certification within the BEYOND program receive priority status as in the IPP program. Uh, let me first address part 135 in general. I will point out there were two companies that received their part 135 certification while under the IPP. There's also a, an additional company that did achieve their part 135 that did not participate in the IPP. So what we're seeing is as the community, uh, as the community matures and as more operators come in, the need to do those groundbreaking exemptions or authorizations is less and less. Um, that being said, should there be an operation that, pro that provides uh, a unique kind of groundbreaking exemption? Um, yes, we would consider that as a part of the BEYOND program. Of course, anything moving us further in the areas of BEYOND visual line of sight, whether that be under uh, general aviation part 91, uh, commercial air carrier under part 135, um, 137, agricultural, um, or any of the other air operations, we will consider those. But it's really about what moves us towards beyond visual line of sight. So any, I wonder if we have any more questions. I'm watching the chat box intently. Uh, there we go. What differences, what differentiates BV loss waivers from being approved versus being denied? And what does BEYOND plan to enhance the support of BV loss? So a waiver or an exemption is approved when we feel, we the FAA feel that the safety case that's been presented to us meets the requirements um, of the regulation. And so it's really, does the safety case uh, meet the requirements of the regulation you wish to operate under? Uh, does the FAA have a plan to enhance support for BV loss? One of the specific objectives of BEYOND is to do more of this work so that we become more consistent at it. And it leads to the way that we can codify BEYOND visual line of sight performance such that people, we can write it into a rule and then people can simply operate to a rule rather than coming to us for a waiver or an exemption. Okay. What is the lesson you have learned through IPP that you apply to the new BEYOND program? Well, I wanna go back to that last statement I said. Um, you hear us saying uh, scalable, operations, you hear us say repeatable operations. I wanna focus on those two words. Many of the approvals we do right now, um, while groundbreaking, probably do not scale to the type of operations that the people, uh, the, the companies or the individuals really want to get to with those operations. So the lesson we've learned is we've got to work in public-private partnerships to figure out what are those additional things we need to do in order to remove those um, conditions uh, that make it not scalable? The second is to make it repeatable. Many of these are kind of one-off approvals and can't be applied generally. That is both a function of our ability to be consistent 
in terms of our approvals in the FAA. It's also a function of industry and individuals uh, knowing exactly the performance that they must meet to achieve BV loss. And in many of these areas, we're breaking new ground. Uh, so it's, it's really an iterative process on both sides. Um, how will accomplishing BV loss practically enhance the impact of drone operations? Um, well, there are many drone operations that are very, very valuable um, just in visual line of sight. Uh, there are many corporations that use drones for industrial inspection tasks, inspecting uh, communications towers or other um, uh, infrastructure such as power substations. But when you come to industrial inspection of linear infrastructure, uh, such as power lines, pipelines, uh, railroads, roads, you really having to either maintain the drone in visual line of sight or have visual observers uh, in sequence so that they can maintain it really um, does not make it a practical uh, activity for the long term. So uh, that's the first thing is it really it, it enables industrial inspections of things like linear infrastructure. Also, um, to Kathy's point about the hundreds of miles in Alaska and many other places, being able to do package delivery, not just of small packages, but of medium sized packages as well. We saw several instances where drones were used in emergency response situations as a part of the IPP. How are you applying these lessons learned from these approvals to get more first responders the opportunity to help in emergency situations? Um, I think, let's see if Rebecca, are you still on? Maybe you could help us with your, uh, your experience in the river rescue. Yeah, I think uh, the key for first responder groups that aren't in the UAS technology world is that um, many of our first responder groups, whether it's police departments, fire departments, or emergency medical response, um, don't have the experience within their teams necessarily to be able to apply for the certificates and the waivers that they need to be able to operate in most metro and urban areas. And so the BEYOND program is going to be exciting for us because that's one of the key programs or one of the focus points for us is going to be how do we get those authorizations? How do we get those waivers? How do we operate the online of site and do so safely so that we can use it in public safety situations? So I think the work that's being done in the IPP program is critical because it's creating a standardized system for public responders and first, first responders around the nation to be able to start implementing drone programs themselves and utilizing drones to save lives. Now we have another one I get to uh, give back to the lead participants. Um, do the lead participants feel the IPP has helped to advance the integration of drones? Um, and I'd like to start, we haven't heard much from you, Mr. Brock in Kansas. And Nick, I'd like to hear a little from you about how this has worked up in North Dakota. And then I'd like to go to our other North state, North Carolina. The answer is yes, absolutely. Okay. Try again. Like that, that Midwestern uh, straightforwardness, right, Bob? <laughs> Big picture is uh, we really, truly have witnessed because general aviation is such a deep part of our roots here in Kansas, um, we can't help but focus exclusively on either agriculture or aviation. So working with, with Jay and his team to make sure that we really are integrating drones as a cohesive part of aviation um, is an absolute focus and, and it's a, it's a non-negotiable for us. Um, we've absolutely seen so much progress as we see operators move from four years ago where there was a handful of operators with very little standards and very few opportunities to learn and project their aircraft into a mission that was meaningful uh, to now where it's just the opposite. Um, people are mindful of 
is this a, uh, an appropriate use of this aerial vehicle? And, and we're seeing tremendous progress through the community outreach and education and training programs. So the answer is yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Nick, real quick. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, we're, there's a lot of value in it. I, I think that um, you don't just go from a, a knowledge exam under part 107 to find beyond visual line of sight. Uh, there's incremental steps along the way. And I think that integration pilot program has, has helped with that. You know, it's uh, how do we fly one mile, two miles over people so that, uh, you know, the beyond program that we can find a way to, you know, fly five, 10 miles and, you know, start working with more advanced uh, aircraft. So, uh, very incremental step as part of the IPP, and um, there's a lot of value tied to that. Okay, David. I, I think I'll make it simple and just tell you um, uh, yes as well. How about that? Okay. <laughs> what was that great line you said? North Carolina wasn't. We're not just about. Flight. We were not about first and uh, first in flight. We uh, we are. That's a great. That's a great way of saying it. And then I think I want to wrap it up here with uh, a quick view from Terry and from Mark. Terry? Oh, we seem to have, that's right, we lost Terry earlier. Mark, how are things in Christiansburg? Has it been beneficial? Uh, things are great in Christiansburg. You now it's, it's interesting to listen to the people talk. Uh, in our experience, the, the technology advancement and the regulatory and policy advancements were all fantastic in the IPP. But really the biggest, biggest news to me is, is still, and the biggest accomplishment, at least from what we've experienced here, is seeing drone delivery service in a real community and a community loving it. And a community, you know, in a relationship with the community that has resulted in, you know, a year of operations with, you know, nothing but constant positive feedback. And so that just shows us that we can, integrate in a way that uh, is beneficial for everyone. And so for me, it's, that's, that's the big news story for us. Uh, thank you, Mark. And I guess now it's time to wrap it up a bit. Again, I wanna thank all of our lead participants. Uh, without you, this program would have been, would, could not have been successful. And you've absolutely been fantastic to work with an inspiration in your dedication to innovation and safety in your communities. It really has been the opportunity of a, a career for me. So uh, with that, I'd also like to thank Secretary Chow for her remarks and um, Mr. Kratzios, uh, Finch Fulton, and of course our FAA Administrator, Steve Dixon and our Deputy Administrator, Dan Elwell. And thank you to all the team who put this together today and to everyone across the FAA who helped make this program successful. So with that, thank you very much and have a great day.